Right, telly had a chance. You know what, I guess I better review this thing. And yes, I'm talking about the MacBook Pro 16 and 14 with the M1 Pro and M1 Max. Now I had the bookends of these models. So I had the base model and the maxed out model. So it gave me a really good insight into the difference in performance from the lowest performance laptop. And I say lowest performance only because literally it is, not that it's not performant. And then I had the most powerful one they had. And if I think of how many laptops I've reviewed, I'm very experienced in reviewing laptops. I mean, if you're interested in laptops, make sure you do subscribe because I get a load in. And yeah, nah, I'll give you the tip. There's never really a perfect laptop, but within the scope of what this laptop is designed for, this laptop is perfection. And I don't think I've ever seen the likes of it. Because if we go outside the scope of what this laptop was designed for, which is obviously creator work, it still stacks up. Reviewing so many laptops, I know. If you want performance and power, you need a big, thick, heavy laptop. That's out the window. This thing performs like a desktop. You've seen it beat the 28 core Intel Mac Pro with afterburner card, 8K footage. This thing can destroy it. Well, beat it at least anyway. Those things are $50,000 if you want to spec them up like that. You can see right here, right now. I have the latest 12th gen Alder Lake PC with RTX 3090. And the scores are very similar in say Premiere Pro. And that Alder Lake PC is overclocked. And we'll see how fast the Alder Lake laptops will be because I'll actually lower the wattage of this Alder Lake to a laptop wattage. And we'll see how it performs against the M1. So yeah, again, make sure you subscribe there. But even though the scores are similar, have a look at a playback score on the Mac. It destroys it. And have a look at this footage here. This is an RTX 3090, 12th gen, older lake. It cannot even play this footage back. The Mac can play that footage back no problems at high. And we're also told if you want performance, it has to be loud and has to be hot. Well, woof. This thing is virtually silent for most of the stuff you do, unless you really render it and pushing that CPU and GPU. We're also told if you want good battery life, you need an ultra portable with a big battery. Well, no, these are performance laptops that can beat desktops. Never mind beating other laptops and still have best in class battery life. Also, look at this display. You've never seen a display like this on a laptop. Now you can grade professional HDR video. And by the way, if you're lucky enough to have one of these Macs and you're watching this in HDR, you know. HDR is now possible on your laptops. So again, we'll look outside the scope of what this was designed for and listen to this. This has the best display on a laptop, the best speakers, the best build quality, the best keyboard, the best trackpad, the best performance, the best battery life, best, best, best. Now, some of those things will be equal to the best, like say, for example, the keyboard. Maybe someone likes another keyboard better, whatever, but it is at least the best or a match for the best in every single category. Now, it's not perfect. It's it's not for everyone. I will do a specific video on why you shouldn't buy this, especially if you're in the Windows world and you want to run Windows apps and even gaming. Don't watch those videos where you see some gaming benchmarks and you go, oh, maybe I can buy this now. No, I'll do a separate video for that. But what I was just talking about, the best, 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 that's all outside the scope of what it was designed for and just how good it is as a general laptop, the best of all those things. So even if you're not a creator, if you want the best laptop, it's here. I mean, it's expensive, but I mean, when you watch HDR videos with this sound system, no other laptop compares. Yeah, it's got three Thunderbolts, HDMI 2.0, SD card reader, and that's about all you need to know, and the MagSafe charger there, which I've done some videos on. Look at my playlist. I've done a lot of videos on this, and by the way, have a lot more performance videos with this laptop coming soon compared to the older Lake desktop and Windows PCs. So I just want to quickly talk about a couple of things. I'll also have a video on everything wrong with this laptop and there are some issues with this, probably things you want to know about before you jump in with one of these laptops. So these are bigger, thicker, chunkier than the last models. That's all right with me given that we're getting the performance and they're very quiet. But when you sum it up as having the best of all those things, and yeah, it's expensive and you're getting the performance, as long as you're within the scope of what this was designed for and what this is optimized for of a desktop, so portable desktop power, how can you complain with how expensive this is? I spec'd up an X1 Extreme. It was more expensive than this. It ain't gonna perform anything like this for content creation. It even got destroyed in gaming and that had an RTX 3080. Now, which one should you buy? 14 or 16 inch base model spec'd up? Well, get the best one you can afford. First place to go upgrading is the RAM. If you go have a look at Artis Wright's YouTube channel, you'll see something as simple as stitching together a panorama 
you can have 2x performance increase in your RAM from 16 to 32, 32 to 64, a doubling of performance. He actually even has this big Photoshop file where you can get up to 6x performance with more RAM. And he showed a proper demonstration of why the RAM matters, a real world thing, not one of these stupid things where we have five, six, seven apps open that really aren't using that much memory and going, oh look, I'm rendering, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You're doing nothing, mate. You ain't even taxing the system. Art is right, taxes it properly, real world, and the performance difference you can get with RAM can be significant it's not always going to be the case but go to ram first and one thing you need to know about the 32 core 16 inches if you're using the gpu while you're using battery the battery life is going to be a lot less than the 16 core gpu model and just to demonstrate the base model versus the max out i exported my hdr project in final cut and it was five minutes faster with the maxed out model versus the base model and that's 50 percent faster so five minutes faster. Imagine it's a 16 minute project because it was an eight minute project. That's 10 minutes at another eight minutes. That's 15 minutes. That's the big difference, the RAM and a GPU. If you need it, get it RAM first. Right, can you actually hear me now? Now this has a 65 watt RTX 3060. And believe it or not, this is a 65 watt GPU here. This is the 32 core, 64 gigs RAM. Now this is Shadow of Tomb Raider and what we know is this thing here gets 92, 93 frames per second at 1900 by 1200 high settings all day, all night, on power, on battery, doesn't matter, right? This thing here again, RTX 3060, 65 watts, 65 watts, the GPU, the CPU on this is 30 watts, the one on this one can go, you know, over 45 watts, it is a 45 watt CPU, but 80 frames per second versus 92, 93 frames per second on battery, well, this was capped at 30, even though I turned it off in GE Force Experience. But the big problem really is... And you have seen this laptop compared to 100 watt RTX 3080 and it destroyed it, it beat it. I have it compared to 165 watt and a Ryzen laptop with 100 watt GPU as well. So you can check out those videos. I have in the description a playlist of all my videos on this M1 Pro and Max sort of laptops here. So honestly, that these can be compared to a RTX 3080 just blows my mind. And the thing here is it's beating a 3060, right? And I never thought they would even get to 3060 performance and it beats it it comfortably and yeah without being the hairdryer again this one when it games it's not even that loud so the fans are on but they won't even bother you all right so another awesome thing about this is the sound of this thing have a listen Woo! Yeah, that sounds amazing. Now that is 137 tracks and this is the real project. They made this song in Logic. This is Little Nas. And by the way, I don't know if he's a QNAP or a Synology fan, but this thing here is not a Nas. I'll tell you what this is. If you want to save on storage, this thing here connects by Thunderbolt. You can put four M.2s in here, four. And you can raid them any which way you want. Has display poured out, one connection, Thunderbolt 3, Wharf. And by the way, Sonny Dixon put me onto this thing here. So save on storage, use this. I'll leave a link in the description to Sonny Dixon's website. He's a champ. Now getting back to little Nats over here. Are you really going to do more than what a professional done? This is 137 tracks. It plays it, no problems. It sounds awesome. Come here in need. Oh yeah, that's an awesome song. And you can see here, it's lighting up. Look at it. Lighten up a lot of tracks there and it sounds amazing on this sound system so look here's the honest truth you could get by with a macbook air for music production and look even with serum and stuff like that if you're into making edm sort of stuff the base model will handle this no problems 137 tracks is no sweat speakers are amazing now let's talk about the display all right, so let me show you the magic of this display. Yes, 120 hertz, yes, ProMotion, yes, Pro XDR, whatever you want to say. And it's everything they say. 1,600 nits peak brightness, 1,000 nits normal brightness in HDR mode, and then it is locked to 500 nits in SD mode, which I wish it was a little bit more. But anyway, let me show you the genius of this. Usually you're in SD mode or you're in HDR mode, one or the other. Well, that's definitely how it works in Windows, and that's how it used to work in Mac OS as well. But I'm going to put this to 500 nits P3. So it's 500 nits here, okay? So you'll see here, 
it looks like standard SD. It is in SD mode now, and this looks like SD content. It doesn't look brighter than the background, okay? So this is an SD mode, as I said before. You can see there, it doesn't look any different, right? It looks the same as the background. Now, have a look at this. So now let's go into here and change it to HDR mode and see it brighten up. Now, you have to have a HDR monitor to see this. So you're gonna to have to be using one of these Macs or you're gonna to have to have a phone that you know supports HDR to see this. But you can see here, just this window here, okay, is HDR. The rest is SD. You can see how you know dull the background looks now compared to the video, because this is HDR now, this. The background is still SD. This is genius, because before you had to be in SD mode or HDR mode, and it even gets better than that. Have a look at this. And as you'll see, the normal background is just SD, but that little window there is HDR. And if we go to view, I do not have to say here, show HDR as tone mapped. I can uncheck that now because this is a proper HDR display and I can just go here and I turn that off. So show HDR as tone mapped, turn that off because we have a proper HDR display. So if we bring up the scopes here, what you can see there is watch this. This is HDR. This little window here is HDR. The rest is just SD. And I can just bring that peak brightness up. 1600 nits, woof, woof, woof. That is just genius, okay? So now this is the first laptop you can actually really grade HDR and you don't have to have the whole screen in HDR, just the bit you need and that's perfection because you don't want your editor to be HDR, you just wanna see the content in HDR because this would just be too bright and blowing your eyeballs out. Now you can just see the content in HDR and it is just amazing. And I'll just go back here again and this is SD now, this screen. Now I'll bring up that video again. Watch the brightness. It's just amazing. Have a look at how bright it is compared to the background, okay? Have a look. It's just amazing that you can, you know, in a window you can just do HDR. So yeah, to wrap it up, yeah, there's some bugs with the software, some beach balls here and there, some optimization needed. And if you use stuff outside of what it was designed for and outside its optimization, it can go straight back to the pack and even be slow. But you use it what it's designed for in the scope of what it's designed for in apps that are optimized for it, it can compete with desktops. That's all you need to know. The battery life's phenomenal, best display, best, 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 all those things, that's what it is. So anyway, catch you in the next one. Tally ho.